consumed with, the more we will discover what God's true purpose for our life is. Yes, we have a general purpose for our life. We, we talked about those things. We put those on the board here a minute ago. Those general things that God said we're to be consumed with, that we're to live our life for, are forgiveness, truth, mercy. serving others, mercy. Uh, mercy and grace, right? Uh, with God's word, we're to be consumed with those things. But then there's, then there's the, those are the known things. Those are the big general things that God said we're <coughs> consumed with. Well, the more we get consumed with those things, God will eventually start to show us the specific things in my life that are not known. What, what job am I supposed to have? Who am I supposed to marry? What, what's my purpose in life for my future? What are, where am I supposed to go to school if that's what God wants you to do? Where am I supposed to work? What am I supposed to, where am I supposed to live? The things that are going to bring me satisfaction because God brings them to me, I'm not forcing those things anymore. I'm just walking in obedience to God, being consumed with the things he says to be consumed with, and then he will unfold before you those things as he wants them to happen. That's when God moves mountains. Well, I don't see God move mountains in my life. Well, it's because you're not, and you're not walking with God. You're not doing what he says to do. If God's going to move mountains in your life, he will move those mountains when you start to get on the path that he has for you. And then he'll clear that pathway however he wants to clear that pathway. All right. So last week we talked about some of those things about we have to be obedient to God. We have to, these are, if, we, if you do this, there, there's promises in the Bible, okay? Some promises are, are conditional, and then some promises are not conditional, okay? Uh, a conditional promise is God says, I'll do this if you do this, all right? One of those is, the Bible says, we saw in Proverbs last week, uh, we saw in, in, uh, in Genesis, and we saw in some other places, uh, Ephesians, he says that if you honor your father and your mother, the Bible says if you honor your father and mother, what's the promise of that? You live long. You'll have a long, you'll have a long, long life. life. Right. Long now, life. that's a, God says, I promise, if you, if you, if you honor those who, who, who bore you and raised you, then the, the, the general principle there is, You'll live a long life, okay? So that's a that's a promise of God. That's a principle of God. It's conditional, though. You do this, and God does this. God does this. So a lot of times when we're talking about discovering God's purpose for our life, it's based on conditional promises. You do this, Cedric, and then God will do will do this, okay? Does that make sense? All right. So. Part of when we're, when, we're, when, we're, when we're walking through life and trying to discover God's purpose for our life and we're obeying God, one of the big problems that we have is our emotions. Emotions are a big... Now, did God create our emotions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did God create your brain? Yes. Yes. Did he put the chemicals in your body that create the emotions? Yes. Did he put the circumstances in your life that, that, that lead you to uh, experience those emotions? Yes. Yes, he did. He did. God did all of that. So if he did that, that means they are there again by design. by design. You get depressed by design. You get discouraged by design. You get angry by design. Okay? So there's a purpose for those things. But outside of the word of God, I don't understand what those purposes are because this is the guidebook that tells me how those things work. Before I ever got on an airplane in the Air Force, guess what I had to read? The tech order, the TO, the dash one, the dash three. I had to know that thing inside and out. I had to know it. I couldn't just get that, oper that airplane operated without knowing what? How it works. How it works. But yet we enter life operating this thing, and we don't know. We don't know how it works. We just we just wind ourselves up, and we and we don't and we have no clue as to. Wait a minute, this is how it's supposed to operate. I, I'm going to read that. You know, if I even if I if, if I if I buy a new piece of equipment sometime, you know, if it's not something I already don't already know, I'm going to okay. How does this thing work? I'm going to get out that manual. How does this thing, how does this thing work, right? And then I'm going to keep that manual in case I have a problem. Well, in case you have a problem, yes, you have, you have a manual. <laughs> so 
So I, I got to keep going back to it and keep going back to it and keep going back to it. All right, so emotion. So how do we deal with emotion? That's what we're going to kind of talk about here. I want to make sure my slides are working here for you guys. You got your worksheet should go along with this, okay? So emotions in motion. Man, my emotions, woo, I don't know about you, but emotions can ruin you. Emotions, emotional decision making can ruin you. It can ruin God's purpose for your life if we don't learn how to operate and, 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 and live our lives inside those emotions, okay? Emotions, hard work will get you 90% of the way there, but emotions get you over the finish line. What do I mean by that? They give you a push if you draw them. Yeah. I, I shared this story the other day about running in that half marathon, right? Mm -hmm. And I was, in the last two miles, I was. It, it, Physically, I was drained. The only thing that got me over the finish line was was emotions, was just man, anger or or desire. You know, it wasn't it wasn't so much that my legs. As soon as I crossed that finish line, I collapsed. I just collapsed. I mean, because my physical my physical body had just given out. But the only thing that kept me going those last couple miles was was emotions. So when we're living life, a lot of times we're living life on, okay, our strength and what we can do, but then that last, mm, get me over the finish line, a lot of times that, that's finished off by emotions, and that's a lot of times why, why emotions are there. That's why God gives them to us. Um, before we get to get all in this lesson, I, I grabbed a dictionary earlier, all right, and just, just I don't know this word, all right, but it's called pantheism. Right. And and I, it just, you know, I flipped the page and, I, and it's just something I looked at and I found it says, the belief that God is the sum of all beings, things, forces, etc. in the universe. Right. It's pretty cool. Yeah, well, pantheism is, it's, it would, that count is God. That wall is God. That oh, clock so is God. Cool. Yeah, the pantheism would be a, a perversion of who God is. Right. Is that good or bad? That's bad. Right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. So let me keep going here, though. All it's right. Not. So part of discerning God's will for making my life, or part of discerning God's will for my life, is sound what? Decision making. Decision -making. You gotta go. It, it, yeah. Just let it keep going. Yeah. It's, it's sound decision making. So i God expects me to make decisions in my life. He gives me guidance. He gives me guidance in His Word to make decisions. Right. And a lot of times, strong emotions can get me off of truth. Emotions will try to get me off of truth. Right? I will be convinced that some... I had a conversation with a guy yesterday. And, and he is in such a bad emotional state because he has believed the lies that people have told him. Or what he believes they have said about him. Not what they said about him. But what he believes they have said about him, and it's driven him to lose because he's believing the lies, and it's driven him driven him to lose his job, his home, his family. And I was talking to him yesterday, and I said, and none of that is true. You know what he told me? Yeah, but I, but I just can't. I can't help but believe it. Does he have anxiety? Well, these things are driving his, the, the lies are driving his anxiety, you know, and, and I told him, I said, you need to get back to truth because he's, he's off of truth right now. He's out of fellowship right now. He's off of what this said. So he's believing all the lies about him. So yes, so he's developing depression and he's developing anxiety. Because he's believing these things that are not true, and then he lets them build up in his head and build up in his head, and those pathways become stronger and stronger and stronger, right? And, and to the point where he needs really, he needs strong accountability. He needs strong. He needs to be here, but he won't. But he won't do it. You know, you can't help somebody who doesn't want help. They got to come to the point of so much pain that they seek help. So. But uh, yeah, part of discerning God's will for my life is, is, is making sound decisions in my life through emotions, not, be, not by emotion. Does that make sense? Right. Through emotion and not, not by emotion. Key elements, so there's, I, I put down a couple of, three elements of, 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 of sound decision making. And these are just kind of general things. When you make decisions, these will help you get through the emotions of, 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 of making a decision, okay? Key elements of decision making. Number one, get the facts. 
What are the facts? You know, I told the guy yesterday, I said, let, 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 let's cut out all these things that you think. I said, what are the facts? And I started laying out the facts for him. And you know what he would say? I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. No, you've got to, you have got to believe the fact. The fact. When I, when I was in the Air Force, okay, you could not always believe how you felt in the airplane. A lot of times I felt straight and level. But I looked at my instruments and it would say you're in a dive. Which is true. And that's an instrument bell. My instruments are true. How I felt was going to kill me. How I felt was going to kill me. That instrument panel was correct. If that instrument panel said I was in a dive, I was in a dive and I better correct it or I'm going to die. <laughs> Yeah, didn't matter how I felt, you know, sitting there, okay, I feel straight and low. Yeah, I feel straight and low. Yeah. Or sometimes you would feel like you're climbing or dot, and you look at transmits and you're what? You're straight and low. You got to come back. Those instruments always brought me back to what? Yeah. Truth. Facts. Didn't matter how I felt. It brought me back to facts. Okay? So I got to get the facts. Number two, I got to be what? Patient. Patient. We said Abraham. Abraham's Abraham's focus was always on heaven. What was what was coming, not what was before him, but what was coming. And sometimes we want what's right in front of us, and that's not what's good for us. And we're not patient enough to wait for what God has for us, which is the best thing for us. Okay, so I gotta be what? Be patient. I gotta be patient. I got there's some things in my life that I'm waiting for right now, guys, that I have been waiting on for two years that I believe God wants in my life. And I truly, through prayer and just through God showing me things through circumstances, I truly believe there's some things that God wants me to do. But there's some other things that have to line up and I'm going, Lord, it's been two years and I really feel strongly about this, but these are the things I need to happen because I, I, don't, I, 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 don't, I don't have the resources to make these things happen. I don't have the, so Lord, if this is, I believe strongly this is what you want me to do. It's been two years now, Lord. How much longer? And you know what God said to me, kind of whispered in my mind? When I say so. When I say so. And I'm like, this is hard. <laughs> Number two is hard, isn't it? Be patient. Bottom line. You're talking about your side by side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wish. I wish. Number three, stay what? Uh -huh. Stay calm. Stay calm. You know, the first thing they teach in the airplane when you have an emergency is what? Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Engine's on fire. It's okay. Right. Once I start to panic, what happens to my thinking? It goes everywhere. Yeah, it goes everywhere. Then my emotions start to fly and mm -hmm. things get out of control. No, 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 no. And that's why it's good to have scripture memorized because I don't have to panic. I can go right to it. Right? God is always in control. He is always in control. That's why I memorized this verse right here. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory God. of God. Right? So I have to, when I was in the Air Force, there were certain things you had to memorize before you could get in that airplane. You had to know them cold. You had to know cold if you had an engine fire on the runway while you were, while you were taking off down the runway and an engine caught on fire. You had to know it by memory what you were going to do. And you got tested on it all the time. Closed book. Couldn't have your book open. Boom. No notice. Pop evaluation. Boom. It's just like if I came in here tomorrow and said, okay, we're going to have a test on everything you learned yesterday. Boom. And you got to get a hundred on you. A 99 is failing. Got to be a hundred. Why? Because they don't want you to panic in that situation. They don't want you to panic. They want you to know it cold. So you don't panic because once I start to panic, I start making bad decisions. Right? When I'm using... I'm in control of none of these. So I make really bad decisions for my future when I'm using. Does that make sense? Life decisions take time to what? Process. Process. Let me back up here for a minute. We must practice prayer and, 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 and patience. When I, when I have things, when, I, when my emotions kick in, 
when something happens, it gets me angry. When something happens, it gets me anxious. When something happens, it gets me depressed. When something happens, it gets me uh, whatever that emotion is. I've got to take the first thing I have to do is take it where? To, to the Lord in prayer. Because what happens in those strong emotions is your brain gets hijacked by chemicals in your adrenaline. What is adrenaline for? To get you through. Yeah, fight or flight. Either fight the fire or run from it. But it is, it is not to be lived on for a long amount of time. People who live anxious lives are always on adrenaline. And what does adrenaline do to your body? It wears it out. That's why people who live a life of worry and anxiety, they just, after, by the time they hit 40, they look like they're 60. By the time they're 60, they look like they're 80. If they get to 80, right? Because that <laughs> adrenaline wears their body out. That's why the Bible is all. The Bible says what? Be anxious for nothing. But by what? Prayer. Prayer and supplication. So God is telling me, take those strong emotions immediately to where? To him. They're going to hit. The emotions are going to hit. God made you that way. You're designed that way. Remember? Now the Bible tells you how to deal with that design. So he says, take that anxiety, take that depression, take that anger, and immediately take it to prayer. Because that time of prayer then gives my body's chemicals time to do what? Calm down. Calm down. Levels them down. Gets me to thinking clearly again. Helps me be patient. Helps me not to panic. Helps me stay calm. It's not because so much I'm looking to God for an answer. It's because God's trying to calm me down. And that's how he tells me I have to do it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So this helps you remove the risk of making decisions based on our emotions. It's good. Even in good emotions, elation, happiness. Man, I can make real bad decisions when I'm in a good mood. Because I get overconfident. Yeah, I'll buy that car. How much is the car payment? Thousand bucks a month. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Whoa, that was a bad decision. <laughs> that was, <laughs> I can't believe I made that, that decision. You know, I make it in, 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 in uh, and I'm in a good mood, I make bad decisions. Strong emotions lead to wrong decisions. Emotional setbacks must not lead us to life setbacks. Okay, an emotional setback is temporary, but it can lead you to a life setback that can last a long, long. How many of you have made really bad decisions based on your emotions? My hands up. I mean, I think we, we should all say, hey, I've, I've made some, that was, that was dumb. That was just really, really not smart at all. I, 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 made a, I made a decision years ago. I was in the Air Force. I told you guys this. I was in the Air Force for a number of years from 1988 until 19, 1988 until 1997. And I made a decision in 1997. I made an emotional decision in 1990. It was an emotional decision. It wasn't a factual decision. And it wasn't a spiritual decision. Because in the back of my mind, God was all over me about this is wrong. You know, that, that still small voice. This is a dumb decision. This is a dumb decision. And I was ignoring it, and I was making this decision based on emotions. I was angry about something that had happened, and I made a decision to leave the Air Force and go take. And for the next two and a half years, I stayed in neutral for two and a half years of my life. Spiritually, I was in neutral, which you're never really in neutral. You're going back, right? You're either going forward or you're going back. Financially, I was going backwards. Spiritually, I was going backwards. Emotionally, I was going backwards. In my relationship with my wife, I was going backwards. And for two and a half years, I fought. And so I finally said, God, you're right. I'm wrong. But it set me back for two and a half years. Two and a half years. So... Uh, we have to be careful about our, uh, making those emotional decisions. Paul had an emotional crisis. If you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, Paul had several emotional, but this is one here that I really, I really like to read, and we've talked about this one before. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 9, Paul has, his, he has been in one trial after another trial after another trial after another trial, serving God and doing the right thing, and in serving God and doing the right thing, he experienced some real trials and some really emotional problems. And he gets to the point in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, he says, 
For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our what? Of our trouble. Which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure. In other words, we were overwhelmed. That's what he means here when he says we were pressed out of measure. We were overwhelmed above strength. In other words, we were whooped. We were, we were barely making it. In so much that we did what? Fair. Despair of what? Life. Of life. In other words, he's at the point he's going, God, if you just take me home right now, if you just kill me, I'd be okay with that. Take me out. Yeah. I don't think he's suicidal, but I think he is. He's, he's in such despair. He's like, God, if you were to take me right now, I'd be good with that. But, he comes to verse 9 with a big but. But, how did he get through this? We had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in who? Paul recognized that his emotional state was at such a point that he could not trust who? Himself. In those strong emotional points in your life, you can't trust you. And you have to recognize that, just like Paul did. <clears throat> Paul recognized, I can't, I'm in such an emotional state that I can't trust myself. Therefore, I better put my focus where? On God, who does what? So he's going, he's got to move his mindset from one of, I want to die, to I better put, the, I better put my thoughts on the one who raises the dead. Because right now, in my mind, I'm dead. That's what we have to do. It's not easy to do. But you have to do it. You've got to make the choice. You're in that super position we talked about earlier, right? Choose life, choose death. Choose blessing, choose cursing. He chose life, and he chose blessing, but he didn't feel like it. So his emotions did not drive him to make a dumb decision. His emotions drove him where? To the Lord. To the Lord. That's what we have to do. When, I will pick on Johnny, I will pick on that. When Cliff makes you mad, <laughs> don't go pick on Cliff, go pick on God. Right? Don't beat him up. Go beat God up. <laughs> God, I need you. God, I can't. Man, you're going to have to change my thinking here. God, you got to change Cliff. Oh, no, maybe you don't need to change Cliff. You might need to change me. <laughs> right? So that's what we have to do with that. How did Paul avoid this emotional decision making? How did he avoid it? He was honest about where he was. I'm in a bad state. God, I'm in a, I'm in a bad state. Man, honesty. Be, be honest. God, I don't like where I am right now. God, I don't like Adam right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding with him. But you, right? Just be honest. Does God not already know how you're feeling about something? Yes. He does. So you're not sitting there going, man. God's not going, oh, I didn't know that. No, you got to just be honest. Paul was just honest about where he was in his emotional state. Number two, be humble about your emotional state. Just, you know, Lord, I, I got this sick. I'm human. And right now, I just want to die. I, I just, that's all. I just, I just, I just want to die. And the only one that can overcome this is you. You can't overcome your emotional state without God. You spent your whole life trying to overcome your emotional state by using or by doing the things that we do. God wants you to go through your emotions, not around your emotions. Because going through your emotions with God grows you up. And it strengthens you and it increases your faith and it teaches you something and it makes you a better man. It makes you stronger for the next person. Because if, if you read back up to the first part of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul tells the Corinthians, the whole reason that I went through all of this was so I could help you. So Paul is saying, so this grew Paul up. It, it matured him. He said, the reason I went through this horrible, horrible emotional time where I wanted to just die was so that I could help you when you went through it. How can you help somebody when they're going through it if every time you go through it, you use? How can you help your wife, your kids, your friends? How can you help them? You can't. Right. You, you can't. So, so he, was, he was honest about it. He was humble about it. And then, like I just said, go to verse 4. He used it to be helpful to others. It was for other people. God might put you through a terrible time because he knows he's going to get you through it so you can then help somebody else through a worse time. 
right? That's why he did. It's not about me. It's about it's about what he's doing. The purpose of our emotions, they are strong indicators and reminders to do what? Seek God. Seek God. It's it's the, it's the, it's like in your car. Uh, when a light comes on, it's telling you to do something. Your emotions is the light coming on in your car. Boom, I just got a low gas light. What's that mean? Time to, Time to get gas. Boom, I just got an oil light. Yeah, I just got a check engine light. Well, that just stays on in my car. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> check engine light. Chris Battle told me, he said, check into like me, it's time to get a piece of black uh, electrical tape and put it over. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But they're strong indicators of seek God. <laughs> strong emotions should not drive our decision. It should drive us to God so we can make the decision. Wait three days. Rule of thumb. Wait three days when you make a decision. Seek three days. Seek three other options and seek counsel from three trustworthy people. This gets the emotions out of some of your decision making. Does that make sense? Helps to remove that. And when you seek counsel from three trustworthy people, make sure that they're kind of expert or you know <laughs> what the issue is, you know? I'm not going to, uh, I am not a car guy. Guys, I am not a, I don't know, I know the last thing I know is cars. I'll be honest, I know how to put, I know how to have a gas in the tank. I can jump the battery, you know? Um, I can turn it, <laughs> not a, so the last person you want to come to about getting advice about buying some type of car is Todd. But you might want to go to Mike. <laughs> right, or and some of you all, you know, you're, so you're not the, you're, that's not the one. You're not going to come see me about it. So it. make sure I'm going to say, yeah, go get it. <laughs> sure, go <laughs> get that thing. That Don't let emotions good. dominate you. Let emotions motivate you. Don't let emotions control you. Let emotions <laughs> direct you. <laughs> let emotions direct you. Don't let them control you. Don't let them dominate you. Good. Any questions on that, guys? That's kind of our. I know we went through that. Man, we were pretty quick. That's a little fast.